We're live here in Hollywood, California. Brian just had a big launch today, so we're going to run through a couple questions. Uh, first of all, what did you launch today, and what are you personally most excited about? Yeah, we launched the new Base app, and we've been working on a long time Base as a chain, yeah. but now we made a dedicated app for it, and it's a super app. So it lets you do as a wallet, lets you do social, lets you do messaging. There's an app store. So it all kind of brings together these decentralized protocols into one easy to use package. We're trying to make like the Netscape moment or the iPhone moment for on-chain technologies. Because so, yep. these have always been so difficult to use in the past. Yep. And now we're trying to make it accessible to anybody. Amazing. What uh, I've heard the original origin story for Base, the whole story of Jesse coming to you and, do, and building this project internally. At what point did you decide that it should be an app by itself? Yeah, well, originally when he came to me, he asked for a billion dollars and 60 headcount, and he had this giant vision. I was like, let's, you know, usually innovation happens with small teams, right? Constraints. Two, two pizza teams, exactly. Yeah. Breeds, breeds uh, innovation, so breeds creativity. So he started with like three to five people on base chain, yep. got that to be the number one L2. I'm thinking, okay, this is pretty good. And we realized at some point um, we needed to kind of like vertically integrate to have an app that was paired with that chain just to like give distribution to all these creators. Like, you know, if you're going to put something out on the protocol, the, the app has to like add it right away. Yep. And right now we want anybody to be able to build any client on top of it. Yep. Um, but we thought we would start building our own client first as kind of a reference client. Yep. That way we can just innovate faster. So now it's launching with its own base app um, yep. and people have started to build it, build cool stuff on top of it already. And I think like social media for a long time, um, like 95% of the value flow has gone to the platforms, yep. not the creators. Like most people who use social media never get paid for anything unless you do a big brand deal, like you yep. guys have, um, yep. or you know you're, you have millions of followers. But now we think like 95% of the value should actually go to the content creators, and they should own all their own content, own yep. their username, have it be portable to any platform so they're not locked in. That's kind of that's really more the original vision of the internet. Yeah. Um, how does this change the experience for developers that want to build on-chain experiences? I feel like historically, if you wanted a lot of attention, you had to launch a token yourself first. It was a way to aggregate yeah. users and build excitement. But now you guys, I'm assuming, will have you know uh, the entire kind of like backbone of the Coinbase ecosystem getting users on here and potentially providing distribution to people so they can build unique, maybe weird, fun you know, types of apps uh, on chain for the first time without having to necessarily come out the gates with a token themselves. Yeah, that's right. So a lot of developers have had this issue with the app stores, getting yeah. their app rejected or going through these approval processes, yeah. getting their APIs turned off. So um, on base, any developer can build an app and it's live from day one. And yeah. you can, anybody around the world can use it. There's not some approval process. You're, it's just running on the open internet, right? Yeah. And you, we actually, through our acquisition of Spindle, uh, we now yeah. have an on-chain ad network too. So you can yep. actually promote it if you want yep. through the feed. And every creator on, on base has a, a coin associated with their, their username. Yep. And uh, actually every post on base is a coin too. So uh, you're, it, it's kind of wild, but I mean, like if you're a developer and you put out, you put out this app, you have instant distribution, but people yep. can also buy it the coin of it itself if they want to invest in it. So. Just setting up my base, basically. Did you do that post yet? <laughs> the, original, actually, the original. Yeah, the know, Jack, Jack Dorsey, Dorsey one. Yeah. Uh, so actually, Jesse and I just did a selfie on stage when we were announcing it, and um, we kind of had a toss up about, like, you know, should I post it or did he post it? We, I was like, you post it. You, you deserve the yeah, credit. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. he's, um, it's live. People, I think it has 127K of like market cap already or something like that. <laughs> Wild. Uh, what are you excited about on the stable coin front? I know you have base pay. It sounds like people are going to be able to buy products using that across the entire internet as well. What can you talk about that? Yeah, so we've always wanted to make checkout online just super simple. Yeah. And you know, putting in your credit card and all these things, it's, it's laborious and it's like putting in- Every like, time. Yeah, and it's giving away your, your private key. Like why yeah. is there so many copies of my credit card all over the internet? It's inherently yeah. unsecure. Yep. So uh, with our partner Shopify, one of the, you know, they have millions of merchants. Every, pretty much everybody's yeah. bought something from Shopify, whether you know it or not, like from yeah. all these different stores. So they're now accepting base pay and awesome. it's super simple for just people to check out. So they can accept, like millions of merchants online now accept USDC and it's, they're basically, it's, it's, it's super cheap. It's anywhere in the world. And they're giving 1% cash back to the customer because Crazy. the merchants are saving. paying that 3% yeah, like, fee. Exactly, they can give some of it back to the customer. That's amazing. Uh, talk about the decision to do this as a separate uh, app and why maybe the two of them can work together to get a billion, a billion users on chain, right? That's like yeah. been the goal, it's a, it's a big number. Uh, I think everybody here is confident that you guys can get there. 
but talk about how the kind of in your mind how the two apps work together and why you wouldn't necessarily you know combine the two. Yeah. So Coinbase has been great, the Coinbase app for a long time. We've helped yeah. millions of people get on, you know, their first access to crypto. Yeah. And that's been really been built in a custodial way. So yeah. Coinbase is a regulated financial service business. Yeah. That has many benefits, but it does have some drawbacks. It's actually kind of difficult to launch it in every new country. Yeah. We have to go get a license and a set up a local entity, yeah. uh, just like a bank would or, or a brokerage or something like that. And then uh, we have to ask our customers for a lot of personal intrusive questions, you know, personal information yeah. we have to collect to onboard them because we have to follow these rules around KYC, et cetera. Um, and so with our self-custodial wallet, since yeah. we're never taking possession of customer funds, you're in control of your own funds, right? So it's not a, it's not a financial service business, it's a software business. So you can yeah. launch it in 190 countries from day one, Yep. And um, it spreads all over the world. Now, in the past, it was these things were like these self custodial wallets were a little too difficult yep. to use. Like, if you lost your 12 word phrase, you'd lose your money. Um, yep. Now we've fixed a lot of like the onboarding. It's way simpler. You can just use an email. You don't. You don't. There's no 12 word phrase to remember. Um, with base, every transaction's like under a second, under a cent anywhere in the world. Um, with ENS, there's like human readable names instead of these Ethereum yep. addresses that are super long and nobody can remember. So a lot of these pieces, like smart wallets had to come in. So a lot of these pieces had to get built. It's kind of like the early days of the internet, you know, where like, like um, JavaScript had to get invented in cookies and yep. SSL so that you could do secure transactions. And that's what had that Netscape moment really took off where people could start to build things on the internet. It, had, yep. it needed a couple of these Lego pieces. So those are now there with Base. Base is a self-custodial wallet, unlike our custodial products. And that yeah. just allows us to do new things.